Hello everyone, welcome to another brand new episode of the Long Coat Mafia Podcast. I am the show's main host and frontman, the Reverend Godfather. And I, even though I say it every single time, this is a special episode. In a very special way. This is a, a to be forward with each and every one of you. This is an unpaid promotional type of show. Even though it's not... It's going to come off like that, but it isn't. The reason why I say that is because a little more than a week ago, promoter of the four-state Comic-Con, the reboot, Matt Burns himself, contacted me on Facebook asking if he could, in a way, come on the show, promote his September show, which is September 9th and 10th, and interview one of the guests that he is going to be having on the show. I said, hey, why not? And in a a group Facebook chat between him, the guest, we decided to do the episode, and the guest said, hey, can I bring in somebody else who's kind of a friend? He works with me a lot. Can he come on the interview as well? And I said, you know what? Why not? So, on this episode, not only do we have Matt Burns speaking to us about his September show, we have Kent Wagner, who's going to be at the Four State Comic Con, the reboot show, the September 9th and 10th at the Hagerstown Hall in Hagerstown, Maryland. But we also have Mike Mundy. And... For those who don't really know, Kent Wagner appeared on The Walking Dead as a zombie in at least one or two seasons. Not to mention he's played a Ravenger in the current Guardians of the Galaxy movie. And he played like a bit part, a little bit part in Spider-Man Homecoming. Not to mention Mike Mundy has been played a bit part alongside Kent in Spider-Man Homecoming. Plus... He was also a Walking Dead walker in one of the earlier seasons of The Walking Dead. So, here it is. Me, Matt Burns, Kent Wagner, and Mike Mundy. And on the other side of this interview, which is on via Skype, which means you're going to have that left and right audio, and which I apologize for. I cleaned up a lot of the, the pauses and a lot of lag time that was there, so you're going to hear a lot of that. Gone, kind of gone, so if you hear a little weird cuts, that's why you kind of might have that weird audio jump cut type deal, so please, I apologize for that, bear with me, here's the interview, and I'll give you guys and gals the f- complete guest list for Matt Burns' upcoming show at the tail end of the whole interview, so stay tuned, and here's the interview. Alright folks, uh, welcome to another brand new Brand new episode of the Long Coat Mafia podcast. Today I have two special guests with me coming through the power of Skype. So please bear with the oddity of the, the sound oddities that are coming through right now. Our first guest is a special guest. It's Kent Wagner, who uh, he's an actor and a special effects artist, would you say? Or yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm not a professional special effects guy, but I do dabble in effects and... Uh... I, I, I've, I've made uh, some pretty neat monsters uh, on my own, but uh, when it comes to the the real stuff, uh, you know, they're they're the professionals out there that handle the, the actual the film makeups. And also, he's been on with us today. He's been on the show several times before. Some of you know him. Some of you love him. Others might hate him. Nonetheless, it is Matt Burns. Welcome to the show, Matt. You there? Yeah, I'm here, buddy. Good to, good to be back here again. And uh, for all the haters and lovers alike, you know. I either love you or fuck you, one or the other. <laughs> what if you want to love them and fuck them? You know, they, they got to pay extra for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, as promoted, uh, both these guests here, listeners, are on the show today because of, uh, what's the convention called, Matt, this coming up September 8th and 9th, is it? Uh, September 9th and 10th, actually, Chris. It's the Four State Comic Con, uh, new and improved, the reboot, if you will. Uh, we've since moved out of the Waynesboro Skating Rink. Now the skating rink has shut down and become a flea market. Um, we are now at the Hager Hall, which is uh, 901 Dole Highway in Hagerstown, Maryland, right on uh, right on the main main track there. Um, it's uh, conveniently located. It's right, right off I-81 and I-70, right where they meet. 
So we got some great stuff there, a uh, much bigger venue. You know, we're going to have lots of great vendors, lots of great cosplayers. I mean, you know, lots of great guests. We got just in The Walking Dead alone, we got Ann Mahoney, who played Olivia. We've got uh, Peter Zimmerman, who's currently on the show as Eduardo, one of the Hilltop Warriors. And, of course, we got Mr. Kent Wagner here, who was a featured zombie back in Season 5. Um, he was also in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and some other really cool stuff, Vampire Diaries, etc. And, uh, like I said, we got some other cool stuff, too. We got, you know, the original, well, the second, I guess, original American uh, Rita Repulsa, Carla Perez, one of her first appearances on the East Coast. Um, we got Steve Cardenas, the Red Ranger, uh, who fought right almost out of her, Rocky. The, uh, let's see, we got Natalie Skye, uh, a beautiful, beautiful girl from Sons of Anarchy, the uh, TV show. Uh, and we also got a couple of great comic artists, uh, Mark McKenna and Ron Wilson, both who work for Marvel and DC. So it's going to be a great time. Uh, we got cosplay contests, panels. I mean, you know, the, uh, the Reverend Godfather here has ran several great panels for me, uh, mostly Power Rangers. And, uh, hopefully we'll get to, hopefully we'll see all you guys out there September 9th and 10th. That's right. We're going to be there. The show's going to be there as well. So you can come join us and please see the fine guests, including uh, Kent. I don't know. Kent, for the least few days, at least a uh, few hours, I know I've been thinking, for some ungodly reason, I, Kurt's been co- going through your, through my mind. I don't know why. So, um, and I do apologize for that. So Matt's been helping me get at least Kent through my head. So as Matt has said, you've been in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Were you in a traditional full head makeup, or was it just you know, the ping pong balls? Yeah, well, no. This is a uh, there's a great story there. Um, I was uh, I ended up landing the role of the sneaker alien, and if you do a little Google research on it, you'll find that uh, James Gunn really brought the sneaker to reality. It was created by Stan Lee back in 1964. In a, in a you know a comic book with Jack Kirby way back when, and when James Gunn was researching aliens for Guardians Two, he liked the name Sneeper and he wanted to use it as a race in the film, so he approached Marvel Legal with the name Sneeper, and uh, Marvel Legal they first said we'd rather you not use the term Sneeper because it sounds too much like the Icelandic word for clitoris. Um, so then James Gunn went on social media and he put it out there and the fans responded and two days later Marvel said go ahead and use a sneeper. So, uh, yeah, I was a sneeper, and it was a three-and-a-half-hour full-head makeup application every morning. I worked about 15 days on set with the production, and total it was probably 20 to, you know, 20 to 25 days total. With uh, We had a Ravager camp we had to go to, test makeups, wardrobe fittings, contact fittings. It, it, it was a uh, – it really was – the most fun project I've ever worked on and working with James Gunn and just the cast and crew. It was really the best project I've, I've had the pleasure of working on, but, uh, um, and I'm looking forward to James and Mouse Guardians three. So hopefully, uh, we'll see more, uh, sneakers in Guardians three. And as Matt, uh, I think has stated that you were all on a, a featured zombie on walking dead. Uh, can you tell us the difference between working on a production such as TV versus a movie set? Oh yeah, there's a lot there, and 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 uh, I'm always uh, I'm a big special effects guy. Um, you know K and B effects they handle all the walkers on The Walking Dead, and they do amazing work. But it's Legacy Effects who puts together these aliens for the Marvel films, and they are the best in the business. But uh, the difference between film and television, uh, you know, something like Guardians, there was a rigorous auditioning process where we had to go through thousands of people, and we got narrowed down to about 50 of us that were Ravagers. And about ten of us were heavy makeup ravagers, so it was a a very you know vigorous uh, auditioning process. And um, with The Walking Dead, I had to go to zombie school in season five, which really is more of your. It's not zombie school; they really don't teach you anything there. It's more of your audition to work on the show. And I was able to uh, uh, land a, a walker role in the season five premiere, No Sanctuary, one of the hero walkers. But um, the difference between film and TV really. The productions are run the same behind the scenes, the cast and crew. But uh, you know, we're Walking Dead. You're very much working exterior shots. You're very you're out in the element. And the Guardians, we were on nice air conditioned sound stages. So that was a big difference there. It was uh, and we did a lot of filming at Guardians in uh, Pinewood, Atlanta, which is the most state of the art facility in filmmaking right now. Um, so it, it was a uh, it was a it, it was nice, you know, working in Pinewood, at a, a brand new facility. Um, and then with Walking Dead, we were out in the woods. You know, when you see a walker stumble or trip, it's because we can't see what's going on. We got those contacts in, and uh, you're just you're, you're winging it, man. You might bounce off a tree. You can't see anything once you get those lenses in. But both of them were, were, was a great time. And uh, you know, I got Mike Mundy right over here too. I mentioned 
uh, to you guys earlier. Um, he was a, a season two and uh, three Walker. Uh, I think his best known role, Mike, was the Grandpa Walker, right? In the season, season three premiere, uh, he got a uh, fire poker through the eyeball by T Dog. Was that right? Through the head, yeah, yeah. So, but uh, my good buddy Mike Money, hopefully he can get up there and join us for uh, one of these shows soon because uh, me and Mike do a lot of shows together and we have a good time. I, I well, can't if, really we get, if we get anybody drop out of four state, Mike, you will be the first out. <laughs> I was about to say I can't speak for, speak for Matt, but I'm sure that uh, Matt will probably have be happy to have him be a, a part of the convention one, either one way or another. Oh, yeah. I mean, The Walking Dead is a huge deal. I mean, we have a lot of people who come and just collect Walking Dead autographs. They just come with their posters, and they have like 50, 60 signatures of all, of all types. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're on the show for five seconds or 50 episodes. I mean, it don't matter. I mean, they, they, they love it, or they, they love all their Walking Dead out here, that's for sure. But, yeah, well, and uh, Chris, if you don't mind my if you don't mind my intrusion here, I, I actually got a question for Ken. Um, you know, you being a big James Gunn fan, are you a Tromeo and Juliet? fan you know that was his first film he ever worked on uh, of course and uh, are you a fan of that oh man Troma. i grew up with Troma, lloyd kaufman and all those guys and i think james gunn's story it's just amazing how he went from being a writer and now he's directing the you know some of the biggest budget uh, productions being produced in the industry but uh yeah yeah Troma. i'm an old toxic avenger fan man uh, it goes way back i, I love Troma horror man and i'd love to get be able to work on a trauma production uh that's kind of a bucket list kind of thing i think it'd be neat to get even just a small part even in, in the background well, I, just to say hey i could I, was probably, on a trauma. I, could, I mean i could actually help make that happen though Chad. i actually know a bunch of people who also awesome. trauma before so i probably actually may help make that happen actually uh i mean i find those people who are actually in very very close with trauma or whatever like so yeah i know it's uh yeah i mean they, they did a lot of fun stuff especially back in the 80s oh there's so, so, much, so much fun then yeah so, Kent, you're an old school, because uh, the reason why I'm asking is because uh, a lot of people online, seems like uh, those who are fans of Troma, half of them like the old school Troma, and there is another half that loves the new school Troma. So, are you the person that stands in the middle and kind of, kind of likes a little bit of the new stuff, or just primarily a lot of the older stuff? Uh, to be honest with you, I've, I've dropped the ball on some of the newer stuff. Uh, I'm old, you know, Toxie fan back in the day, but uh, you know, I'm sure if I want, I mean, I, I love low budget horror. I'm a horror fan to the core, and uh, I, I, uh, I, I just haven't had the opportunity to see some of the newer stuff, so I, I can't say either or about it. But I'm definitely an old Toxic Avenger fan. Toxie, uh, he's just, it, it's just awesome. I love this stuff, and I love Lloyd Kaufman's, um, you know, the, the trauma style of. Uh, you know, just low budget, and they're just, you know, they're cranking out some, some movies that, are, that looks like they're having a lot of fun making them, too. Now, speaking of kind of the low budget and indie stuff, uh, rumor has it through the grapevine, both you and Matt are working on a low budget film called Bottom Creek, is it? Yes, Bottom Creek. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I haven't had any uh, time on the production yet, but I think we're going to film later this year, and I'm looking forward to it. I think uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with that production. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to to working with everybody out there. Matt, do you, yeah, have, no, any, be, do you have any news sorry, on it? Or, uh, what, well, uh, actually, you... uh, we, 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 we've shot some scenes and whatnot. Uh, the, the, the film company is called High Rock Pictures. It's run by, uh, three, it's run by three guys, uh, basically, uh, Todd Chamberlain, uh, Jeffrey Miner, and uh, David Lance. Who are you know kind of the kind of the three producers or whatever, and I've actually uh, worked, kind of worked my way up to production credit on this thing as well. But yeah, I know it's going to be a great film. Uh, we just did scenes. Uh, we actually have a teaser trailer up on YouTube uh, for Bottom Creek with uh, Jim Crutt, the helicopter zombie, who's a great guy, and he he works on a he's a great friend to a lot of low budget filmmakers in the area. He's been in just about all of our movies. So yeah, Jim's a great guy. He was at the last Comic Con. Super fantastic guy, as I said. But yeah, no, we actually have. Uh, if you want to look it up, it's uh, Facebook.com back slash bottom creek we have videos up and we have an indiegogo uh uh, uh thing so if you, if you guys want if anybody wants to donate we have plenty of cool perks and whatnot you can get from that and yeah we plan to have that done and released you know post-production and everything hopefully by next spring so and like i think kent's going to come up hopefully at the end of summer or early fall to uh, shoot his scenes as uh great as as uh actually my he plays my father <laughs> in the movie which is hilarious but yeah he's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun it's about, kind of a, that, that same backwoodsy feel as like texas chainsaw massacre and deliverance have kind of you know family killer movie <laughs> and this is going back to you, Kent. You being behind the mask a lot of with a lot of things. Which do you and with that interest on doing your own the special effects makeup and all that. Which do you prefer, the digital ping pong ball type ordeal, the digital or the old school practical effects that might oh, be? Oh man. 
I'm 100% practical. I I think, you know, some of the best artists in the industry are are making these monsters. And, uh, you know, know, CGI, digital, has come a long way, but I'm always a fan of practical effects. I think it gives the actors something to respond to versus, you know, like I said, ping pong balls or a green screen. Um, You know, know, they're filming Godzilla down here right now, and um, I wouldn't mind seeing a guy in a rubber suit stomping around rather than just a digital Godzilla. But, you know, it is what it is. But I'm, I'm a huge fan of the makeup artist. And I'm a huge fan of practical effects, and uh, I'd, I'd rather see those guys work than uh, nothing against the digital guys. But I'm, I'm a fan of the artists, so I'm definitely a hardcore practical effects guy. Uh, the reason why I asked is because there has been a lot of argument in the uh, special effects. I think I saw a post on it on my timeline today in reference to some people saying that it's kind of uh, when the practical is seen on screen nowadays with the high def and the ultra high def. <laughs> screens it looks i think the word was used as cheesy or not pretty versus how digital effects or cgi is prettier and can be upscaled much easier how do you yeah how do you fall uh, yeah. I, I, i've uh you know i've had practical in my vampire diaries i was a heretic vampire in season Six, I believe it was episode 17 a great makeup and the makeup artist you know we did a, a days of test makeups and a camera test and when we finally got on set you know we had the whole makeup together wardrobe or filming scenes uh, he did an amazing job and in post-production they'd go in there and they digitally enhance his makeup and he was pretty upset by that I don't want to mention his name because I don't want to bring him out there but uh you know it was sometimes the digital I mean then the whole time on set, you know, with guys like Ian Somerville or the main cast of the Vampire Diaries are like, oh, you're just killing it. They really treated me like a, like one, you know, part of the team that day. And, uh, but when the episode released, a lot of my artist work was completely, you know, digitally enhanced. And he was a little, I, I talked with him after that when I was working on Guardians and, uh, he was a little upset by that. He showed me before and after pictures and there was a big difference where, you know, they definitely changed the color of the makeup and the looks of it after we did several camera tests, you know, which we thought we had the look dialed in. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a practical guy, man. So, you, there again, nothing against digital artists, but uh, if it can be done practically, I want to see it done practically. I, like I said, it gives the actors something to respond to, and uh, I, I just think it's, it's better all in all. It gives, you know, it's putting good artists to work, and it gives the actors something to, you know, to actually look at rather than, like I said, a ping pong suit, which I've been working with recently uh, on a new production I can't talk about. But uh, it's funny seeing those uh, the little ping pong suits walking around because it's just, you you can't get the same, you know, you can't get in the same mindset as you actually would see, you know, that monster out there or, or you know, that hero. Um, so um, it's, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm practical to the core, man. That's that's just how I am. I love, I love, I love the real effects, man. So I, I guess I, we could both agree that for every uh, great and perfect practical effects and great and perfect uh, Lord of the Rings type of practical uh, digital, there's going to be that really cheesy or campy sci-fi channel-esque CGI in reference yep. to with that. Yeah, yeah, that's going to happen. You know, it's, it's the way the industry's changed, but I, I'm glad to see that, you know, the artists are still being used and we haven't gone completely digital. I hope that never happens. Uh, I lost a great spot on the, um, um, I believe it was... Uh, Constantine, the TV series, uh, the, the, uh, my make, a good makeup artist from the mine down here had me pegged to be a principal demon on this production, and uh, at the last minute, the production decided to go digital with it, you know, so I, I lost out, he lost out, and, you know, I haven't seen the final product, but uh, I, I guarantee you, uh, it probably would have been done better if it had been practical, and I would have out there and give it all you know all i had but uh they decided to go digital with it so when they go digital you're not just putting one guy out of work you're putting several guys out of work really so i'm you know definitely uh practical all the way man so um, well don't well don't you worry Kent. bottom creek will be 100 percent practical because that's all we can afford <laughs> <laughs> that's where it's at yeah, that's so where yeah it's at. well we got a great we got sort of speaking of i want to give a guy a quick plug real quick uh at the comic-con at four state comic-con make sure to check out kent and uh my, and a good friend of mine donnie drum who went to Tom Savini's effects school. They're going to be doing something really cool for the, for the con or whatever, a great workshop for effects for all you guys want to learn about it. So definitely yeah. check that out. It'll probably be the, early in the day on Saturday. We don't know the exact time yet, but it's, it's getting worked out right now. Yeah, that's going to be a good time. I, I'm looking to see what Donnie throws together, and, uh, yeah, we'll definitely we'll have a nice little 
FX tutorial there, and I think, uh, you know, I, I, he's going to have me in some full makeup, so it should be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. That means cosplayers, if you, who are ever out there listening, it could be an added bonus to your outfits that you put together, having either battle damage or scar damage to your uh, cosplaying needs. It, it could prove an interesting panel for you guys to attend to. So, and not to mention, Matt's shows are... For the last couple of shows, they've been what, Matt? Uh, like ten, fifteen dollars? Yeah, I mean, our, we try to keep our prices low. Our advance tickets are ten dollars per day, fifteen for both days, and uh, fifteen dollars a day at Thor. So yeah, we try to keep things. We try to keep things fresh. I mean, we're not the biggest convention in the world, but I think I think we give pretty good bang for your buck. So that's that. And that's the thing. We want to make sure everybody can afford to come, and everybody can afford to, you know, support our great vendors and our our, our celebrities like Kent. Make sure they can, you know, if they want an autograph or a selfie with somebody, they can get it. You know, I just want to make sure that everybody can for, can be to the fullest without having to pay, without have being forty, fifty bucks in the hole before they even walk after before they even walk in the freaking room. So. That's because, like I said, I mean, that's what's killing the convention scene right now is these conventions, I think, are breaking mm-hmm. themselves out of business, my personal opinion. I agree with that. Uh, uh, I guess it, this is going to be more so towards you, Matt, but I think Kent could pipe in on this, too. Um, last couple of hostfuls, and I think on the way home from um, Mel's convention, me and Big Candy have spoken about how the smaller cons like yours are kind of helpful to the local environment because, or local economy because there are a lot of people who cannot make it to the larger, more mainstream shows. But uh, there have been a lot of, a few guests, not yours, Matt, uh, not yours. I haven't heard it from yours. This was at the library show, uh, pop culture show, a few weeks ago where one of the guests uh, called pretty much their show and, in essence, I guess it was directed to the smaller shows, very gimmicky and... Uh, Along those lines, that it was gimmicky and pretty much pointless. Or what are your thoughts on like people saying stuff like that? Well, I mean, you know, here's here's the deal. I mean, you know, we, I mean, you know, I personally do this because I love it, um, and I love you know seeing everybody get together and having a wonderful time with their friends and family. I mean, I don't see where that's gimmicky at all, quite frankly. I mean, but I mean, but it's. I mean, I have had very few people walk out of one of my shows and not had a very good time, even the even the guests, even if they didn't make their guarantees. You know, they thought you know they thought it was a lot of fun. So I mean, that's you know, I mean, that's that's the thing. You you have to find a perfect balance. I mean, and you know, in case in point, you know, if you do if you run a smaller show, you have to promote it. I mean, that's I mean, me and you, me and you, Reverend Godfather, we've talked about this how many times. I mean, how many, how these play, how these people just they don't understand how to promote. They think they make a Facebook event and that's it, and then six thousand people are rush up. No, you know that. They just they they don't understand you know how to get the word out or whatever and I mean it's not all the time their fault but I mean but they, it's the same but I mean but they you know these these people get discouraged or whatever because they just they either they didn't try hard enough or whatever I mean it's just they you know and that's why yeah, and that's why you know small towns I think get a bad name because you know because the I mean and again you know as a as, as a promoter who's run failed shows myself you know you have to give you have to give you know yourself time to learn i guess or whatever but the problem is with in today's world it's hard to give yourself a learning period because everybody wants the instant gratification that's that's the whole thing right now is that i mean and it's hard i mean you gotta i mean it took me two or three times before i finally did something successful you know i mean i had to change the format and everything else so it's it, I mean, like I said, if, if, if coming out and having a good time is gimmicky, then you know what? We're the biggest gimmick. As four state Comic Con is the biggest gimmick in the world. But you know what? Come on out, and we'll you know, and we'll prove to you that a small con can be just the same as a bigger one. You know, I mean, it's I mean, I just I, I mean, and, and and I mean, we, we I mean, in my personal opinion, this area needs something like this because, like you said, not everybody can afford to go to Baltimore or Harrisburg or any of the any of the bigger the bigger city cons or whatever. I mean, you know, even Awesome Con. I mean, you know, even though those they're great people to run that con. And again, I'm not bashing anybody if right. you get it right you know, if you if you can make it make it i mean i'm just saying that. i mean trust me i mean if i ever get to that point oh, oh yeah but i mean it's just you know i mean but at the same time it's like you have to you have to know your bounds you have to know your limits but at the same time you have, i mean you know that's why we try to make it as interactive and as fun for everybody as we possibly can and you know what we've i mean even you know now we've moved out of the skating rink moved into a larger venue and i mean so you know good things can happen with you know hard work and with a good team of people I think that the reason why I brought it up to you and all that, because one, you're a local promoter, and at the time I initially mentioned it, uh, there was an article that popped up on Facebook that, in reference to a, in the area, it was a smaller show, per se, it was in Miami, their first time doing such a show, granted, it's Miami, Matt, (laughs) 
Uh, yeah, it's a much, a, much bigger know, area, much more, much more money, much better economy. You know. But uh, their first show, they had six thousand people show up for this first time event. Uh, compared to your numbers, you know, considering the area and everything else, that's still comparable. You know. Looks oh yeah, I mean, we yeah. in, in Waynesboro, PA, our first show, we had fifteen hundred people. Waynesboro, PA, only has about eight thousand people in the town. <laughs> so do the math. Right. I mean, I mean, it was, yeah, but so, I mean, that's great. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that Miami show did very well. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, so that's 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 wonderful. I mean, you know, I mean, it just goes to show you you can do a successful first time event if you if you, if you you know if you do it right. Like I said, I mean, it's just you know, and like I said, hopefully with this bigger venue and moving to a bigger town like Hagerstown. Hagerstown. What, do you, what would you say, Chris? About twenty five, thirty thousand people, something like that. Oh, give or take, it's probably a little bit larger than Martinsburg. It's so it's yeah. I was gonna say it's bigger than Martinsburg. It's definitely bigger than Martinsburg. Definitely bigger than um, Martinsburg. I want to say it's probably closer to fifty. Yeah, I was gonna um, say maybe, maybe even that big. I was gonna say. I mean, I mean, I mean, no, but, we're not Baltimore, or DC by any means, but right, I mean, but right. there's. But the thing is, what you have working for you in reference to Hagerstown is very uh, Hagerstown. Uh, is similar to Winchester, and please let me explain, Matt, because Hagerstown tends to have a lot of activities, and there are there when you have a city that has a lot of activities, therefore the people are hungry for more activities, something new, something different, and this could be put one of those things to fit into that cycle or that niche that needs to be filled. So I'll, I'll be more than interested, even though. I'll be a vendor there as a way to seeing, you know, how well it's received in Hagerstown. So I'm not bashing you in any way, shape, or form. So I'll, I want to see how this turns out. So, oh, you and me both. <laughs> that, 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 was not a, that was not a diss at all, in my opinion. Absolutely. I mean, I feel the same way. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how it does in a, in a bigger setting. Absolutely. It's, it's, going to be, it's going to be interesting. Kent, do you have any uh, thoughts on this? or? Well, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to mention any particular names, but I did a show recently up in the Ohio and talk about gimmicky. Um, they actually, uh, they had a live band there on Saturday and, uh, on Sunday they brought in a wrestling rink and had wrestling there. And it was a smaller show in, uh, uh Ohio, but, um, you know, it, it was kind of, a, I've done a lot of shows and conventions and I kind of prefer the smaller ones because I think you get more one-on-one time and you get to meet, you know, people that you, you know, you're not going to see like you mentioned in Baltimore or bigger markets. Um, but uh, it was it was kind of neat being at this show and and seeing them have live wrestling right there. You know, it wasn't big time wrestling. It was some small wrestling company. Uh, but uh, and then a live band. Uh, I, I thought it was pretty neat. You know, it may be considered gimmicky, but their whole their whole stick was it's not going to be your typical Comic Con. They were trying to change it up, and it was their first year show. And I you know I got a feeling by next year uh, maybe it'll be a little bit better. But uh, I, I don't mind uh, you know putting something different in the show. I mean, you know, I love the cosplayers and, you know, I love, you know, celebrity guests. I love seeing all the vendors. Every show I go to, I'll try to network with everyone there. It's just, you know, it's, it's, it's just what I do. But, um, I, I thought it was pretty neat to see, you know, some live entertainment there and, uh, right on the con floor in a wrestling rink, right on the con floor. It was pretty neat, a little gimmicky, but that's what they're going uh, for. I will, man. So I will I, say this though about about having like a live band or live wrestling, or because the first show I did uh, right before the cosplay contest, I had my friend who does a sideshow act, like a like a freak show type thing or whatever, where he like mm-hmm. does crazy stuff. You know, he'll he'll like you know he'll, I mean you know he'll 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 like lift a cinder block with his gauged ears and stuff like that or whatever. His name's Corey. He runs the coffin box sideshow. Chris, you were there for that, I or you you, you yeah, I, mean, I think yeah. you even know Corey. He was at Slasher and he was also at the first Comic Con. But uh, a lot of times, the only problem the only problem that I that I have with this, this is like counter argument to that is i mean especially a lot of times it, it, it takes away i mean from the vendors and i know they get a little they get a little uppity about that or whatever especially since they, yeah, pay, yeah. they pay for a booth and then, and then it really distracts people from their table and whatnot so that's why i try not to have a whole lot of that. it's not for panels i and the cosplay kind of stuff. i mean that that's the that's the counter argument is you know these people are paying good money for these tables and you know if you're having this entertainment which is taken away from them, they're not going to want to come back. And then, you know, if you don't have vendors, I mean, if you don't have vendors, you don't have a show. That's that's the way I look at it anyway, because they're going to have everything. I think the best, uh, I know Kent said, Kent said it best, but uh, when I was at the Virginia Comic Con, this was going on 10 years ago, and me and one of the that's artists one of Richmond, were having, right? That's the Richmond, right? The yeah. Raceway? Okay. Yeah. I've been there. Uh, this that's was fine. when they were in uh, the hotel at the time or one of the local hotels at the time, uh, the artist, I was talking to him about 
uh, Wizard World that year, and the the big the, the big versus the small particular shows. And he said he enjoys shows like Regina Comic Con, meaning the smaller shows, because of as Kent said, the the one on one. Whereas a larger show like a Baltimore, or I'm not knocking Baltimore or Wizard World, where it's or also okay, or, like or an also con, where they're in a booth, it's autograph, maybe a quick sketch, next autograph, quick sketch, next autograph, and here it's more. He said on the small level, it's more personal. He could explain things more. If there's more time, he could go. He could instruct people how to improve if they're the person speaking with is an artist or a writer. Or, in fact, he could go into why he did something particular in a particular issue, so forth and so on. He's got more time to do that. So, And it, he says a lot of times the fans come away with a, a lot better experience in the smaller shows than the larger shows because it it's more of a friendlier atmosphere. So, uh, yeah, I could definitely, I could definitely go along with that. Like, so I mean, it's, I mean, yeah, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's all in what you like. You know what I mean? Some people, you know, if they want to meet the big celebrities, they got to go to the big shows. I mean, because these smaller shows just can't afford them, unfortunately. I mean, you know, I mean, trust me, I'd love nothing more than to get Daryl Dixon or Jason David Frank, but it, it's, it's just not, it's not feasible. I mean, it's just, I mean, you know, I mean, until we build up, we build up, you know, uh, to build up our clientele and whatnot, it's just not feasible right now, unfortunately. So, I mean, you know, it's, cause you can, you, cause I mean, it's a small time front, you get that all the time. People are like, oh, this, you get all the, I mean, I, one time, I, this is a true story. Somebody on Facebook literally called me the Diet Coke of comic book, but the generic Diet Coke of comic book convention. Somebody said that on the Forest Day page. You know, I mean, I just, I just laughed, of course, and just, you know, deleted and blocked them or whatever. But I mean, but it's just, but it's like, I mean, you know, I mean, JJ, you're going to get your naysayers, of course. They want you to, they want you to go, you know, eighty thousand dollars in debt, wind up in prison just to bring somebody. Case just to bring somebody, you know, a huge celebrity that you'll never be able to afford. And like I said, you'll wind up a person dead. And you know what? They didn't even come to the show anyway. So there you go. I agree. I'm I'm, 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 I agree with that. Yeah, definitely. Go ahead, Ken. Yeah, I, I agree. And, you know, I think the smaller shows, it's great for the communities, too. You know, a lot of people can get the, you know, are, are they live in Metro Atlanta or Miami or Chicago. For these, you know, smaller communities, it's just great for the community. It gives them something to do that they normally don't get to see and do. And, uh, yeah, you may not have the big A-listers out there, but still you're bringing people in who have worked on some of their favorite productions. And, you know, they're, they're getting to see some great vendors with, with great products. And, uh, yeah, I'm I like the small shows. I really do. I really do think they're more personal, and uh, yeah, it's just a good time, man. I, I, every show I go to, I, I try to have a good time, definitely. I like having fun, man, but I, I love meeting people. I love shaking hands, and I love telling stories, man. I've, you know, I, I came from uh, – I, I've only been doing this for about five years, and I've been very fortunate in five years to land some really cool spots, and uh, I always try to pay it forward by, you know, trying to get people, if they're interested, I'll, I'll do the best I can to help them get in the industry, but uh, – I, I love the shows. I, I, I have personally, I, I have a better, um, I, I think I do better at smaller shows just because I don't have to compete with those big A-lister guys. I'm not that guy, you know, but, uh, I have worked on some pretty cool things, but, uh, I'm not, you know, Michael Rooker and I'm not, you know, uh, Andrew Lincoln or Norman Reedus, but, uh, I can sure tell you some pretty cool stories. Well, if you want to, you could go right ahead. I am not going to stop you in any way, shape, or form, okay? <laughs> oh, man, Guardians was a blast, man. I tell you, uh, behind the scenes, I, w- I was in the A makeup trailer, Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, Volume 2, uh, sitting next to Michael Rooker every morning. When he's becoming Yondu, I'm right next to him becoming the sneaker alien, and, uh, that was a treat. A lot of great stories from Rooker. He's a great guy. And there again, I mean, I really honestly cannot say one bad thing about Guardians, man. But uh, Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> the first day he came on set in wardrobe, uh, I think he used the word Ravengers a couple of times. He got that Sylvester Stallone accent, Ravengers, Ravengers. Do you know? Ravengers. <laughs> um, uh, Ravengers. <laughs> but, you know, we're, we're Ravengers, not Ravengers. But, uh, you know, Sly got it right. He nailed it. He nailed it in the long run. But it was it was cool working with him and uh, – yeah, I got loads of stories, guys. I, it, it, I could go on and on, but uh, I'm looking forward to getting up there and, and sharing stories with with everyone at the convention. And uh, yeah, man, uh, and then still working. I got some projects I've been working on recently. So there's there's new stuff coming down the line. Spider Man Homecoming is coming out. I was seen in a little snip of a clip of a trailer, but I was one of the uh, vultures. Uh, goons are you know working in his sweatshop. We're working on a. Uh, uh, some alien technology to help the vulture uh, build up his arsenal. So you'll, you'll hopefully you'll see me on uh, 
uh, I think in a couple of weeks, Spider-Man Homecoming. It was my fifth Marvel movie I can talk about uh, right now. Uh, so, yeah, it's, George has been great. Uh, the Marvel made their home here now, so I've been very fortunate, you know, to work on some cool productions, but, yeah, my passion really is doing the makeup work. I, I love being a monster and alien, whatever, um, but, uh, yeah, that's all I got there. Now, you said you worked on some personal um, makeup stuff. Uh, how long does it usually take, or how long does it take you to do, put something together? It varies, man. Sometimes you're in a crunch, and you're just going to throw it together, but I'm old school. I don't use airbrushes. I, I use old uh, Ben Nye stage makeup. And uh, um, I, I have done some molding and casting and, and tried building my own appliances, and I haven't come up with anything yet that I want to reproduce, you know, that as far as I, I can use over and over. But, uh, um, yeah, you know, everything is, is easily available. You can order online or, you know, it may be around your area. The, the, I know engineerguy.com is a great place to order special effects makeup. But, uh, yeah, I'm old, I'm an old grease paint guy. I, I, I do it the old school way. I'm a huge fan of old school horror, black and white horror. And uh, so um, I, I – my arsenal, my effects equipment is not up to date. You know, I'm, I do it the old fashioned way. So it could be anywhere from, uh, I don't know, an hour or two to do, to do a makeup. Uh, but, um, uh, and typically I, I just, I've done a lot of zombie stuff on, you know, on, on myself and, and family and friends. Uh, and I've, you know, a couple of productions I've worked on doing bruises and scars and blood to independent productions, uh, as a makeup artist. And, um, um, that, that, that kind of stuff's really easy. You can crank those out in minutes, but, um, you know, if you're gonna do like a full face, makeup but uh, you know an hour hour and change to, to, to get a, a good look there you know for a good a good zombie look i know uh when i was volunteering this was uh, a good many years ago i decided uh just for shits and giggles to volunteer one of the local haunted houses in the area and they were putting on uh i won't say a prosthetic but a kind of uh they were doing their own open wound sort of thing and one of the things that they were using was uh just plain old liquid latex and oatmeal oddly enough of course they painted it but it, it, I was like, well, are you using oatmeal? And he's like, yeah, it provides the texture. It provides the kind of look we're going for for this. So we just got to paint it and make sure everything kind of looks nice and pretty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I've, seen, I've seen that trick before. And, uh, you know, I, I have a, my, my little, I have my own little uh, web series on YouTube called Shed of the Dead. And we focused on low-budget special effects. You know, how can you create this look on the low-budget? And I, actually, um, I'm bringing it back to life right now. We're going to actually turn the corner and go to more convention coverage, celebrity interviews, and and, and so on, but uh, yeah, you know, the, for every artist, I tell you, with all the artists I've worked with, some of the best talent in the industry, um, they all started out doing that same kind of stuff. You know, they'll dabble around and, and, and as, 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 a, as a kid or as a teenager, they'll, they'll, they'll find the passion for special effects. And you know, some guys like we've, um, you know, uh, the, the gentleman I'll be working with uh, up there, you know, he ended up getting into Savini school, and you know, and next thing, some of these guys are they, they go from working, you know, at home with with nothing, they get they get their education, they get some proper training and they're working on some of the biggest productions uh, i work with a lot of the face-off alumni on these productions down here a lot of those guys are here in atlanta now but uh yeah i mean by all means if if, if you have the desire and passion just get out there and work with what you have to work with create some looks and you know you, you get better and better as, as you move along and you can pursue an education after that or uh you know build up your portfolio and that that'll help out also but i'm i'm a huge fan of uh you know low budget effects and you know wh where it can bring you it could definitely you know if if you if you really have a passion for it and you work hard enough you, you can do anything and uh you know i've worked with some artists who came from nothing and now you know they're working on these big budget marvel productions on the walking dead and things like that so uh you just gotta keep on digging man yeah that, absolutely that's yeah, absolutely ahead, i was gonna man. say uh, we, uh yeah i was gonna say we have a great uh, haunted house speaking of local haunted houses chris uh we have a really good one here in, uh, in Hagerstown called uh, Raven's Eye Manor, and Donnie actually does some of the special effects out of that one or whatever, and that con that haunt's really come a long way in the four or five years. Uh, Rob Rape Snyder, a good friend of mine, he'll actually be at the con, too, probably, promoting the haunted house or whatever, but yeah, you, I mean, if, if anybody's into like that kind of thing, they need to check that out, because they, 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 they take on this awesome hay ride. It's like haunted with like leather faces and stuff like that, with like guys with chainsaws and girls screaming. It's pretty wild, actually, and it's because it's on this big old farm from like the 1800s. Pretty wild stuff. It's right outside at Hagerstown. Yeah, Raven's Eye Manor. Good shit. If you get nice. a good haunted house, even one that's a mediocre haunted house, but if you get that right group with the right the right little scary cats in it, oh, it could be the perfect night. 
<laughs> That's it, man. Yep, yep. I've, uh, you know, I, I worked, I grew up working haunts. Uh, you know, my parents always set our, our yard up for Halloween, and I kind of fell into it in the Boy Scouts. I was in the Boy Scouts when I was really young, and they threw me in the sink of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre room, and that's, I think, is where my love for horror started. Um, but then I worked haunts since then, and this past uh, two years, I've been working with another world haunted house, which is one of the biggest haunts in the country. So I've, I've seen them all from the small ones to the big ones, and it definitely, it, it goes back to, you know, I think the passion and, and, and the, uh, you know, the the haunt promoters and also the passion and the haunt actors. But, um, yeah, it doesn't have to be a big haunt to be a good haunt. That's for sure. I, at one point, I did want to join. Uh, I know you said you were part of uh, Savini's school. I, I was one. I always wanted to be a part of that way back in the day when I was graduated from high school. But it was one of those things that I, when I approached my folks, hey, I want to try this out. I want to because I had that passion to be behind the scenes and do special effects, to try the makeup, to try that aspect and seeing ads for uh, Savini's school of makeup. And it was like, oh, no, way, there's no way, no how you're doing that. So it was like a really great way to dash my hope, Dad, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I never, uh, Don, Donnie, the guy who will be with uh, us at the convention up there uh, at, at Four State, um, Donnie went to Savini School, but, I, you know, I have had no professional training. You know, I've worked with a lot of them, and I've learned a lot from behind-the-scenes stuff, but Donnie uh, could definitely give us more insight on that. But, yeah, Savini's great. Stan Winston's great. There's definitely a couple of great schools if uh, you're able to, you know, get your financial backing, uh, but, and they'll definitely, you know, give you all that you need to, to find yourself a uh, in the industry and some of them will even try to get you job placement after you graduate which is really neat you could end up working on set right after you get your uh, your certification pretty cool i know matt you've worked uh behind the scenes on several uh different short i won't say short films but indie films what what has your experience been like in the in this type of area well um let's see i've uh, been i've been killed by a radioactive tree i've had a running chainsaw with a blade on it one inch from my chest uh, this movie, I get to play a redneck inbred Elvis. Um, good times. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've <laughs> seen the radioactive things. tree one. Uh, yeah, yeah. You, you know, <laughs> just, why, why did I bring that up? Here we go. Oh, uh, Here we go. Oh, Here we go. I'm not going to say anything. Yeah, I'm just going to say you were a good sport about that. <laughs> Yeah, I really was. Especially, especially I, I, I definitely was on that one. But uh, one of the one of the uh, movies I got to be like kind of a featured extra and kind of a background person in was uh, speaking of uh, countless talk about Toxic Avenger. Uh, Cam, did you know that they're making uh, another Toxic Avenger movie called Toxic Tutu? Oh no, I didn't. know. Uh, it's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's already done. It's, it's like a, it's like a mockumentary about uh, it's like a mockumentary about the uh, about about uh, the Toxic Avenger or whatever. And it actually has Mark Torgel, the original kind of Toxic Avenger, and I'm pretty sure Trome is distributing it. Uh, it's got Walking Dead. It's uh, Jeremy Ambler, one of the featured walkers on there. He, oh. He's in it. Uh, Johnny, Fair, mm-hmm. yeah, Johnny Fairplay from Survivors. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they shot a lot of it right in Southern Virginia, and I, I was at a horror convention, and they needed people to be in the movie. So uh, my my uh, my uh, girlfriend at the time was actually in in the movie, and uh, she actually had a speaking role. But I was like one of the background extras, and they are standing in line with the paranormal uh, queen of the paranormal, Kadrosa Ona, who was also uh, at a couple of my cons as well. But yeah, no, uh, it's like the yeah, but it was it was a lot of fun to work on that. And I'm looking forward to seeing the final project. They just premiered it at Mad Monster Party uh, uh, last year. I wish I'd known Kent then. I probably could have gotten your role in it. Probably a good one. <laughs> oh, that's that's all. Awesome. I'm definitely going to have to check that out. It sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah toxic, I've, uh, toxic tutu, like a ballerina tutu. Toxic tutu. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 I got you. yeah. yeah Am- Ambler, I, I've uh, done a couple shows with Ambler. He, he's a pretty cool cat. And, um, yeah, Johnny Fairplay, man, that, 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 they really went digging on that one, didn't they? That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, he's like, well, he, he, again, he was a local to the area. He's from Southern Virginia. So, so I said, yeah, he, he, was, he was local to the area. And, you know, he was just when he'd just come off as a survivor, so he kind of still had a name. I mean, and he was on wrestling for a while. And so, I mean, so, yeah. Yeah, he he was still you know pretty in the limelight. So I was gonna say, but yeah, he's he, he, he's a character too. I mean, like, wow, I mean, he's just as crazy oh, in yeah. real life as he was on that show. <laughs> That's great. I'm definitely uh, gonna check it out. I do apologize for being quiet. I was just updating a few things on social, at least Twitter, saying that I'm having a great time speaking to you guys. And it, it is. I'm not ending. I'm not ending this anyway right now. Just wanted to get the word out that you know everything is going well and i'm enjoying this conversation right now so all, that's all, good. all, all six of his followers have to know yeah <laughs> yeah all, actually it's quite <laughs> yeah all six that actually look listen and read the rest of them i don't know where they go so <laughs> they just friend collect <laughs> yeah 
then it was like, oh, we're going to follow this person, you know? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's just, well, I just want to build, I just want to build my numbers up. <laughs> That's usually how it works. Yeah, th- yeah, thank you for boosting my numbers, you know, but <laughs> I wouldn't mind if you all just, you know, talk we'll a little bit more. Listen once in a while. <laughs> yeah, listen once in a while because I could be screwing up big time and you guys don't even know it. So I should do that just one day just for about an hour, just go fuck you all and just, you know, just to see who actually listens. Like, wait a minute, for an hour, he's just saying fuck you all. What the hell, you know? <laughs> hey, where, where yeah, can we go find on, the podcast? Go on, like, the most hateful rant ever. <laughs> go on the most. <laughs> where, where, where can we find the podcast at? Um, you can find uh, our show. You, it, our main page is the Long Coat Mafia dot podbean dot com, and we're also on the usual spots, which is iTunes and Google Play Music. Okay, yeah, the Long Coat Mafia uh, dot com is what you said. No, it's Long Coat. Uh, the our website is the Long Coat Mafia dot podbean dot com. Gotcha. Okay, got it. All right, thanks, man. Yeah, we'll, 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 yeah, we'll check it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well, I was gonna say, yeah, is, is, Mike, is, is Mike Monday still in here? Is, is Monday still there? Yeah. Or? Yep. You well, want to start with Mike? Yeah, wait, 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 what are you waiting for, buddy? Come on in. Come on there in. There you go. I'm going I'm to hand the phone over to Monday, guys. Here you go. Cool. Hey, hey what's going on? Hey. Hey, Mike, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Me and Spence, uh, cool. me and, uh, well, 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 Spence, well, tell, tell, tell us a little bit about, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i sorry to take over here, Chris, but tell us a little bit about yourself. No, what you been up to? Well, actually, uh, Kent and I just got back from Knoxville. We went to hang out with the, the new Dark Lord from, uh, Rogue One. He's in Knoxville. He's from Wales. He's also Game of Thrones' first White Walker. Uh, Damn. He's plet- uh, Harry Potter, Doctor Who, Batman Begins, uh, a plethora of other things. Uh, Victor Frankenstein, Prometheus, Guardians of the Galaxy as the main guard. I, it goes on and on. But, I mean, he's like one of the most... He was, he was Vader. Uh, That's all he needs to know. He was Vader. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but he's like one of the most positive people I've ever met in my life. Uh, I met him in Germany a couple of years ago at a convention, and we had an absolute blast. So we, I was like, we got to go. Um, I, I did season two finale. I was a uh, later walker in the uh, the uh, uh, memorial, and then season three actually started off on the highball, and then it slowly pans out, and then uh, uh, yeah, they kick in the door of the house, and then shoot my son, and then T Dog puts a fire poker through my head, and I go through the glass. Good times. So hey, you've been hearing us. Uh, me, Kent, and Matt going on for the better part of uh, almost uh, hour. forty minutes, about an hour. Uh, yep. What do you um, do? You have anything to retort to anything that we might have said or commented on? Uh, oh, you know what? Uh, a ton of stuff. But I mean, go ahead. Go um, ahead. You got the floor. <laughs> well, actually, you're talking about uh, a toxic tutu. I was at a convention with. Uh, uh, Mark Torgel, speaking of uh, Toxie, uh, he, was, he was a blast to hang out with. We, uh, we had a good time at Phoenix Fear Time. Um, take you, I feel, almost feel jet lagged from the, the drive and <laughs> the, late, the late night affairs with the Dark Lord last night. Who, uh, Chasing down that rebel scum. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we're going to talk some live music. We had a blast with him and uh, Red Ranger. Oh, and the uh, Red Power Ranger, Steve Cardenas. Oh, Cardenas was coming to Four State, too. Yeah, we're there. We were, there. We were all hanging out last night, yesterday. Yeah, Steve seems like a real, he seems like a real cool cat. Can't wait to hang out with him. Yeah, uh, um, he's got some interesting stories. And he's also uh, a mixed martial artist as well. And pretty impressive. Right, yeah, I know he runs he runs that big dojo out in L.A. or whatever. Yeah, I know he's, uh, that's kind of what he does now, which is cool. Right. He, he also is good friends with my uh, my good friend, uh, Santiago Cirillo from The Walking Dead. I know you guys know Santiago. Everybody, well, you know knows him well. everybody knows Sonic. Everybody knows Yeah, he's, 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 That's a character and a half right there, but he's a great guy. You can hear him coming. Oh, yeah! Yeah, yeah! <laughs> you know, you're looking at Wild, wild <laughs> dude there. I said, yeah, but he, it's funny. Uh, Santiago did the first horror con I ever tried to do in a pool hall in Fredericksburg, Virginia in 2014 called Halloween Fest. And Santiago really? was our fe- he was our feature guest. <laughs> like, he was the biggest guy we had, actually. Because, like, like we, were just, we were just starting out then. And actually, the funny story about Toxic Avenger, we had John Altamura, who was Toxie 2 and 3 after Mark Torgel. Right. Yeah, he was like, I like, 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 like Mark a lot. I can't, yeah, I can't John, speak. Yeah, John was something else. He was, he was, he was a little, a little distracted, if you will, all that way. Kind of. but, 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 I mean, yeah, he, it, was, it was cool to have it. Happened to the best of us. Yeah. <laughs> 
No. So, what are you up to now, Mike? What, what, what yeah. any any new things for you, acting wise? Or no, yeah. uh, I haven't really been. I kind of had to take a break. I was helping up my mom while she's going through uh, chemo and radiation, that type of stuff. But she's cancer free, so it's all good. Um, oh, thank goodness, that's good. Oh, yeah. you got that right. Oh, well, uh, Spider Man Homecoming. Uh, we we had a scene with Michael Keaton. We were we were what his thugs basically. That was pretty cool. And he just and it's so impressed to see him work. He literally at 4.30 in the morning, he's like, he just took over the directing. He's like, nope, this is how this is going. Bam, 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 bam. Uh, yeah, we were forward. Oh. And of course, you know, that Beetlejuice. Oh, man. So it wasn't, uh, he wasn't trying to be, I'm not saying Michael Keaton's a bad guy, but he wasn't trying to be kind of a douche, but he was trying, all right, let's get this done. Let's try Yeah, and no, he's this. like, he was helping out. No, he was not yeah, at but, all. Was all. Not better. at all. He's like, he's, he's basically like, guys, this is why you need to do this. You roll this camera in this way. You come in at this angle. Bam, bam, bam. Roll it. But I can't. I can't wait to see it. Uh, <laughs> I can't Same here. I can't wait to see the final product. <laughs> <laughs> no, really? I'll um, be at. Uh, I'll be at our local movie theater where we run our movie ads. Uh, we're going to be doing some promo for the convention uh, opening right. weekend for Spider Man. So we're, we'll, we'll be at a lighter version of it. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Um. Kent was uh, talking about you guys, and he's like, "Give me all the filler on the way back from Knoxville today." He's like, "Yeah, man. Uh, I need to get get up, link." up with these guys. I was like, man, sounds like a great idea. Oh, you're speaking about Jim Crow. Uh, Mr. Helicopter Zombie. We went to Infect Scranton, Pennsylvania a few years ago. It was like me, Addie Miller, uh, uh, Travis Love, uh, a few other people. I want to say, I want to say Jeremy Amor was at that too. He was not. No, it was, was not. Uh, okay. I was... Oh, uh, but, uh, God, what's his name? Travis Charpentier. He was there. Um, a screwdriver, eyeball zombie. There you go. Almost got Andrea. I mean, Andrea. But Jim Crutt. It's like, hey, man, why don't you come over and sit with us? And I was like, I'm not worthy. <laughs> I was like, all right, guys, see you I'm going to go hang out with these uh, John the Dead and the zombies. Yeah, and but, was, uh, was the shit. I was just at uh, Steel City Con, actually, 40th anniversary. Had a whole pile, like 20 of them in the room. Oh, that was pretty, pretty surreal. <laughs> yeah. and me, me and uh, Mike Christopher, you know, uh, Harry Christmas zombie, Harry we Christmas became zombie. really, really good friends. As a matter of fact, he got me down to Orlando for uh, that huge, what was that called? Oh, crap. One of the biggest conventions in Florida. Uh, and we we all became really good friends, and I mean, I've been to his house, stayed there. Um, uh, I love that convention too. That was a good one. Oh, but back on, let me pick it back on. Put, uh, yeah, we were talking about earlier. The smaller conventions. That's personally my favorite. It's like like Kent said, much more personable, You're, and you don't have a forty, fifty thousand people. But I, mean, I don't mind. I mean, like Red Red Island Comic Con, there's fifty thousand people a couple years ago when we were there, and that, that was just insane. I mean, you couldn't. I mean, like Walker Stock kind. I mean, when we did that, I mean, it's like trying to move through. Going to the bathroom or go get something to eat. Yeah, but you, you, it's like you better have a bottle, bottle take a piss with There's a bottle of like a big piss and you can get to the bathroom. Oh, I forgot we can cuss. Fuck it, you fuck, fuck, fuck. Yeah, don't make him, baby. Cool. Yeah, man, uh, i tell you what, man, Kent and I, we've done a lot of bouncing around together and um, man, we just we just enjoy it. I mean, uh, smiles on faces, man. And anything for the kids, bam, come here. Okay, we got you a free picture. Come on. <laughs> but, uh, uh, I, go ahead. Uh, as much as I don't know how much credit I have left in reference to Skype, so I don't want to, you guys have been very, both Matt, you, Mike, and Kent, all of you have been uh, amazing. Uh, but I don't know how much credit I have left with Skype, so uh, I'm, okay. I'm, I, as much as I don't want to cut it short, <laughs> uh, I may have to. Uh, That's all great. You guys, have, uh, <laughs> you guys have been great. You guys have been awesome. I was not. I got you. Ex- I was not expecting it to go this well, and I mean that in a very positive way. Hey, well, um, that's what happened. No, it's been fantastic. How we do it? I mean, no offense, Chris. This, no offense, Chris. This is probably one of the better podcasts you've had. I'm, I'm not. I'm not lying. <laughs> really? So that's pretty strong. Um, so to kind of close you out. Close it out. All right, bud. Uh, Matt, I'm going to give you guys uh, a little bit of a chance to promote yourselves, to in reference to what's coming up and. Maybe if you want people, if you got like a Twitter handle or something like that, you want people to follow, just spit it out and let us know, including whatever project she might be working on as well, that you can legally tell us about. Okay. All right. Well, hey, I guess I'll kick it off here. Uh, yeah, Ken Wagner, you can find me on Facebook. I have a, a, a 
Kent Wagner page over there. I, I try to share stuff that's going on here in Georgia. Um, Twitter, Kent Wagner FX. Instagram, I think it's Kent Wagner FX also. And, uh, you know, upcoming projects, Bottom Creek. We're going to be filming up there in uh, Pennsylvania soon. Looking forward to that. And uh, I don't know, man, just keep your eye on the Marvel Universe. You might see me popping around a little bit more in some upcoming productions. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, I'm going to pass over to Mike. Anything you want to talk about? Yeah, on Facebook, uh, it's Michael Mundy dash actor. Um, Twitter, I really don't do a whole lot of anything with Twitter because of my uh, someone my uh, agent linked this uh, Twitter account to my Facebook account, but so obviously stuff automatically drops over that way. But I think it's like, and I've really, really tried hard to change this name, but it's something like Michael T W D Zombie Mundy M U N D Y. Pretty easy. Either way, I'll try to. I'll, in the description, I'll re-listen to everything, and I'll put everything that I could make out, or at least everybody's Facebook page, that if they have a, a, a likable page, I'll put it in the description so they could automatically go there, too, for you guys. I've got I've got you pulled up right here, the Long Coat Maf- Mafia podcast. Yeah. So I'll just shoot you some link uh, via message no if you want. Sure. Cool. Oh man, uh, sure, sure would like to come visit. <laughs> uh, we we will, we would definitely have a good time. I promise you that. We're all about that. Keeping the positive. Cool keeping deal. Real. I, like I said, me uh, personally, four state comic con, four state con dot com, all one word. Four state retro pop con on Facebook and Instagram, and uh, four state retro pop con at yahoo dot com. Also check out Bottom Creek with myself, Kent Wagner, Jim Crutt, and more. From High Rock Pictures, uh, www.facebook.com backslash Bottom Creek, just one word, and uh, check us out. Uh, donate to the Indiegogo. You know, we can always use we can always use the funds for you know DVD pressing and all kinds of other cool shit. So, uh, looking forward to that. Looking forward to hanging out in <laughs> September. Hopefully, we're gonna be hanging out. What's that? I said that was nice. <laughs> Yeah, so, well, so, yeah, well, yeah, we're going to hang out with Ken in September, and uh, maybe Mike too, depending on depending on uh, how depending on how the more of the convention planning goes. We'll see. Definitely be hanging out with hey, Chris. Whatever well. quarter, we'll do that. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm available. Cool. I'm ready. Cool. It's my all birthday right, well, weekend. Like said, uh, Chris, it's Chris. It's a pleasure, man. No problem. It's yeah. been a ple- the pleasure's all mine. You guys have been great. A lot of great tales. A lot of great uh, we've got stories, of stories. And conversations. So as I'm going to say this. I'm going to leave it. For, I'm going to kind of give a shout out for Matt. Save it for the show. That way the fans have uh, will be wanting more. So I thank you guys for being on the show. I'll see you guys at the Four State Retro Con reboot, so to speak. So what, what day is that? What we, September, September 9th and 10th. Um, Okay, cool, cool, cool. At the at the at the Hager at the Hager Hall, nine hundred one Dual Highway, Hager, South Maryland. Oh well, I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna do some research. All right, yeah. guys, <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the interview con- slash conversation that we had with Matt Burns, Kent, Kent Wagner, and Mike Mundy. So all their social media links, if you want to s- follow them, will be in the description as well as what they said. Not to mention, as promised, the people that are going to be show up and so far promised to be at Matt Burns' Four State Comic Con is going to be Anne Mahoney from The Walking Dead. She played Olivia. Not to mention, we'll have another, uh, I shouldn't say another, but we'll have Carla Perez who played Rita Repulsa from the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Steve Carnides, who played Rocky the Red Ranger from, again, the early days of the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and the Blue Zero Ranger. WWE Tag Team Legends, Axe and Smash. Their tag team uh, group name was Demolition. Natalie Sky, who's not just an act- actress from Sons of Anarchy, she's also a model. Marvel and DC comic artist Mark McKenna. I've met this gentleman many times in the past. He's such a great guy, such a great artist. Not to mention Ron Wilson, a Bronze Age Marvel comics artist. I hope to get a chance to speak with him. Peter Zimmerman, Eduardo on The Walking Dead. As stated in, in this, and you heard him in this podcast, this episode, Kent Wagner is going to be there. Sorry, Mike Monday, Monday is not going to be there, but Kent is. You can speak to him. 
get some further details off of him. Uh, again, he's in uh, Guardians of the, da- of the Galaxy Volume 2, Walking Dead, and more Vampire Hunter um, Vampire Diaries. Not to mention that there's going to be a few featured cosplayers at this event. Meg Me Co- Cupcake, Intra Ventus, Kitty Co., Lady and Lady J Cosplay. Plus, there's going to be some charity work done by Central PA and Tri-State Ghostbusters. So, come on down the September 9th and 10th to the Hagerstown Hall in Hagerstown and visit us, the Long Coat Mafia Podcast, plus the other vendors and guests that are going to be there. As you heard Matt say, that this event is relatively cheap within the 10 to $15 range. So, come on down. Spend the two days, visit everybody, and come hang with us. Hey, it's going to be a great time. As always, if you have any questions, comments, whatever, feel free to email us at longcoatmafia at gmail.com. Stalk us on Facebook by going to our Facebook page, which is the Longcoat Ma- facebook.com slash the Longcoat Mafia podcast. You can hear all our episodes on our main page that's going back all the way to the beginning two years ago, which is thelongcoatmafia.podbean.com, or you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Apple Podcasts, whatever they're calling themselves right now, or Google Play Music. Plus, if you want to stream us, not only can you stream us by going to our main page, Podbean page, but you can also go to... Our stu- um, Stitcher Radio. So, that's it. Plus, we have a Twitter. You can follow us and stalk us on Twitter. That Our Twitter handle is Long Coat Mafia. Our Instagram is also Long Coat Mafia. You can stalk us there, follow us there. So, it's been a pleasure to have you guys listen to this episode. Stay tuned. Next week, there will be another episode. Plus, we're going to bring out more content as the weeks and months come go by. So, Please, stick with us, and thanks for listening. See you next time on the Long Coat Mafia.